Okay, good morning everyone. So this is a short little lesson on organic halides. Uh, essentially an organic halide is anything that has, um, you're going to see this notation quite a bit, the R represents any carbon. So like any carbon structure. So this could be one single carbon, this could be a benzene ring, this could be a cyclo compound, this could be like decane. Um, it doesn't matter what this is. Um, R represents any carbon-based structure. And then, of course, the X represents a halogen. So when we say an organic halide, we essentially mean that it's a carbon-based molecule that has at least one halogen on it. Okay, and we mentioned this already, but um, when you have an organic halogen, um, it's considered to be, like the halogen atom itself is a branch off of the parent chain. So just the rules of branches still stay the same. So they have to be written in alphabetical order. You need the lowest set of numbers. And if you have multiples of the same branch, you have to use prefixes like di, tri, tetra, etc. So the names when you have a fluorine is fluoro, chlorine is chloro, bromine is bromo, and iodine is iodo. So here's a just quick little example. So we have three carbons, one, two, three. There are two fluorines on it. So remember, this is considered a branch. So when you start counting your parent chain, you start counting closest to your branch. Unless you have a double bond or a triple bond, you would start counting to the side closest to those because they take priority over branches. So a halogen in terms of prioritizing, a halogen is exactly the same as a methyl group or any other um, carbon-based branch. Okay, so here we would have two fluorines, so notice that we use di, and there is one number for each branch, okay, even if they're the same type or even on the same carbon, you have to have one number per branch. So this is one, two, difluoropropane, right, because there's the three carbons and they are single bonds. Um, in terms of properties, okay, so how majority of halogens um, are electronegative. Okay, they're definitely more electronegative than carbon and hydrogen are. So what ends up happening is essentially when you add in a halogen, you're adding in polarity, right? You're creating, there's a polar um, bond there. And of course, um, unless it is completely um, saturated with halogens, so unless every single hydrogen was replaced with a fluorine, um, you would have a polar molecule, right? Because it's going to be unsymmetrical. So typically when you have a polar bond, you're now increasing the polarity, which increases the intermolecular forces, right? So we've added in dipoles. And if you were to start comparing structures to one another, something, um, a similar structure. So let's say I had, let's say I compared this versus propane, right? All right, so here's my propane. So propane is nonpolar and would only have LDF. Right, but my one two difluoropropane has London dispersion, and it also has two dipoles from those two CF bonds. So I would expect this one two difluoropropane to have a higher boiling point or melting point in comparison to propane itself. Right. So as soon as you start adding polarity, right, it has an impact on all of those other properties that we looked at in unit one. Um, so are they more soluble in polar solvents? Well, yes, they are. They are more polar. So, and that goes back to, if you remember from grade 11, right, that whole idea that like dissolves like. So because water, for example, is a polar solvent, something that has polar bonds in it and has a polar molecule will have an easier time to dissolve uh, in comparison to something that does not have a dipole, right? Now, if we were talking about a nonpolar solvent, this would not be soluble, right? Or it would have very low solubility. So it's important when you're looking at solvents to remember if you're talking about something that's polar or not. So of course, if you're looking at water, water is always considered to be polar. Okay, so there's only two types of reactions that we're gonna look at for organic halides. This one we've already done. So this is um, a substitution reaction and of course, addition reaction. So, um, I should say we're doing three reactions, but these two we've already done, so it's not really anything new for us. So substitution, remember, is where you have an alkane 
or a benzene ring compound. And what happens is a hydrogen will swap with a halogen. So we looked at this the other day. Addition reactions with double and triple bond structures. What happens is if you add in a, um, a halogen molecule or even a hydrohalogen, right? So addition reactions that involve halogens is actually halogenation or hydrohalogenation, right? So both of those involve putting um, a halogen on the actual structure. So here we have a triple bond example, ethine, right? So we're adding in bromine, so this is halogenation. So what happens is this will break into a double bond and each bromine will go on to the respective carbons. So we have one, two, dibromoethene now, right? It's broken that double bond, uh, the triple to a double. If we were to react this again, so if we were to take this structure and add in another bromine molecule, so we're doing halogenation again, this would now break to a single bond and we would now have a total of four bromines on there. So notice one, two, one, one, two, two, tetra bromoethane. Okay, and of course, so what's not being shown here is the hydrohalogenation. So this is where you would have HBr instead of Br2, right? But the process of what's going on here is very similar. Okay, so this is our new reaction for this uh, section here. So it's called an elimination reaction. So sometimes this is also referred to as a dehydration reaction. You're going to see that there's some reactions that can go by multiple names. Um, essentially, elimination is anytime you are removing atoms from a structure. Um, we, the reason why we can also call this a dehydration reaction is because one of the products as a result of that removal is going to be water. So let's take a look here. We have two bromopropane. So we have an... Uh, um, an organic halide, right? So a carbon structure with a halogen on it. And the other reactant is a hydroxide ion. So meaning this process, I can't really write super well with the mouse, but um, this process must occur in a basic solution. So anything with a hydroxide basically floating around in the solution <coughs> is basic. So um, the question may not say, oh, 2-bromopropane is reacting with a hydroxide ion. It may simply say 2-bromopropane is added to a basic solution. And that should be enough for you to signalize that, you know, okay, there is a hydroxide ion present. So let's talk about what's happening. So the bromine is going to be, or the halogen, whatever the case may be, the halogen is going to be one of the items that is removed from this structure. And what happens is um, a hydrogen from either the carbon to the right or the carbon to the left will also get removed. So for example, we can remove this hydrogen here. To be perfectly honest, it does not matter which one you remove. It could be one, two, or three, or one, two, and three, but it has to be a hydrogen from one of the adjacent carbons where that halogen is attached. So what happens? The bromine is out, and it actually, it simply stays in solution. So whatever this halogen is, it's just going to stay as a halogen ion. The hydrogen, however, will actually bond with the hydroxide in solution to form water. So that's how we get our HOH. So as a result, these two carbons where you just removed atoms from will create a multiple bond with one another. So instead of breaking bonds and adding in atoms, here we're actually removing atoms and creating a multiple bond. So the same thing could happen if you had, um, if you had let's say, a double bond with a halogen. Um, so what would happen then is you would just be creating a triple bond. Okay, But the point is you need to have, um, there must be a halogen, you must have a hydrogen on an adjacent carbon, and it has to be in a basic solution because you have to have all those things in place in order to create that water and in order to create that multiple bond. Okay, so uh, as promised, this wasn't super long. Uh, please go over um, the lesson. If you're still having difficulties with hydrocarbons in general, please use today um, to do that as well. All right, have a good day.